Okay, so yesterday we talked about multiplying radicals. You didn't see him. I'll hide you, don't worry. Okay. Um, yesterday we talked about multiplying radicals, right? And, um, you know, I just have a question for you before we even go there. Radicals versus square roots. Why, why, why do we call them radicals when they're just square roots? So it's a radical concept, right? It's really radical, right? But why? Seriously, why wouldn't we just call them multiplying square roots? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, yes. Like you could do a cube well, root. Yeah. You could do a fourth root or a yeah. fifth root or a tenth root, right? Twenty yeah. roots. Right? Do you guys get that? So for those, they're not square roots, right? Yeah. So radical is the the overlying topic or title for all of those square roots, right? Have you noticed? If you have, so we have noticed this. We've noticed this that the square root of nine is the same as the square root of three times three, right? Right? And we have noticed that the actual answer is three, right? Yes. The square root of nine is three. So whenever you have this, two numbers of the same thing be multiplied together underneath the radical sign, you just take them out as one. You take those two and they come out as a three, right? And the reason why is because of this. There is a little hidden two here. And that two says you need two of the same number to have it come out as one number, right? If I had the cubed root of eight, I could write that as, is there a number times itself three times, three times, that equals eight? Two. So I could do two times two times two. As long as that is a cube there, then I just need three of the same numbers for them to come out as a two. Does that make sense? So the answer to this is 2. Does that make sense? If I had this, the fifth root of something, right? Right? I'll just do something I know for sure that's going to work. x to the fifth, right? Is equal to the fifth root of x times x times x times x times x. Well, I need 5 of something, right? Five for x. it to come out. There's 5 of them. I can circle it, and it comes out as an x. So my answer is x, right? Does that make sense? So that's what, these are fifth roots, third roots, cubed roots, tenth roots. They're all radicals, right? They're radicals. Does that make sense? It's, this number tells you how many of the same thing you have to have before they can come out as one of them. Does that make sense? Make sense? Okay, so that's radicals. That's why we call them radicals. Now, um, I mean, that's why, Radicals and square roots are not exactly the same thing, right? Um, I have not a clue why they chose the word radicals. No, not a clue. Not a clue. But then again, I don't know why they call a mailbox a mailbox, right? Not a clue. Yeah. Well, it's a box that you put mail in. Yes, it's a box that you put mail in. Oh, brilliant. That is so, that's enlightening. Okay, great. All right. So now, now when we talk about multiplying radicals, I'm forgetting where I was going to go with this. Okay, yeah, something like this. What if I gave you something like this? Um, uh, three in parentheses, square root of 3x squared. Would that just automatically nine, turn nine, into nine, three? Times it's three, which is x. Three x. Uh, the no, the thing above is it's, 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 it's not times three x. It's nine times three x. What is it? Oh, 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 I actually, no. It's <laughs> 27 x. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Wait, so, what? All right. Wow. So, so, what, so you do this in stages. You do these things in stages. Just remember what that means. That squared means it's right next to a parenthesis. That means you're going to take everything in this parenthesis and multiply it times itself. 
right? Twice. So that you've got this times this. That means I'm doing it twice, right? So if I wrote it out that way, I'll write it that way first, and then I'll show you a shorter way. The square root of 3 times 3x times the 3 times the square root of 3x. Is that what I just said? OK. So those are the same thing. I'm multiplying them out twice. That's what this means, right? You agree with me? Everybody knows that, right? That's what a squared means. That's what it means. So now I have 3 times this times this times this. You guys remember the commutative property? It means if I have 3 times the square root of 3x times 3 times the square root of 3x, I can commute them. I can move them. Like commuting to work, right? Right? This 3 could go over here as well. So I could have 3 times 3 times the square root of 3x times the square root of 3x. So 3 times 3 is 9, right? So suddenly I have 9 times, but what's the square root of 3x times the square root of 3x? 27x. What is the square root of 3x times the square root of 3x? 3x, right. Okay, right. And so Gabe was right that now when you multiply them together, that equals 27x. Right? That's your answer. Good job. Right? Now, now let's, that's how, that was the long way, right? That was definitely the long way. Let's try it the shortcut way, okay? So if we had this, again, I'll just rewrite it. 3 times the square root of 3x squared, that means this thing. That means this. Basically, it means this. Everybody look. That squared. I want to see eyes. I'm looking for that eyes. That means that that 3 is squared. I'm looking squared. for eyes. This 3 is squared. 3 squared. This is squared. But squared, for that, crosses this out. So times 3x, right? You see what I mean? So 3 times Well, I, I'll just, instead of doing that, I'll just do it like this. Square root of 3x squared. This squared crosses out this square root sign. So all I have now is 3 times 3, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3x is equal to 27. 27x. All right? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, let's try a couple just to be sure we're sure. Um, where are we? What? Did I erase too fast? Yeah. What did I do? I don't remember. I did 3 squared of 3 squared, which is equal to 3 squared times the square root of 3 squared, which is equal to 3, I mean, excuse me, 9 times 3, oops, oh, this was 3x, right? Didn't I have an x in there or something? Yes. All right, times 3x, which is equal to 27x, sorry. All right, so let's try another one. Let's take, say, um, 7 square root of um, um, 5x squared. I'll do that, why not? Parentheses, sure. right? Parentheses squared. All right, so let's think about that. That's going to be 7 squared, right? 7 squared times square root of 5x squared, square root of 5x squared squared. So then it would, the answer would be, can I see the answer? So we've got, yes, what's this? Um, so that is 49. And then, and then the square and the square root cross each other out. Yeah, so then you have to multiply 49 by 5. Right. And then, so then you and get everybody knows that. 245x. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. So I'll just assume you're right. 245x squared. Right? Assuming that's right, 4 times 5, 245. Yeah, you're right, 245. Right, 245x squared. Is that what you got? Is that what you got, Gabe, in your head? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Can I erase? Can I erase? Henry, are you writing any of this down? Yeah. You wait. sure? Yeah. Okay. No, wait. What? Wait? Yes. Okay. Now, what if I gave you something like this?
What does that look like? What would I have to use? What Distributed property. Distributed property. So suddenly I have to go like this, boom and boom, right? Oh, so it's just four. So the square root of two times the square root of two is? Square root of four. Two. 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 Plus the square root of two times the square root of two is? Two. Two. So the answer is four. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. Square root of two times the square root of uh, 10 plus the square root of 8, no, no, not 8, 14. All right. So I have two options. Well, we can do this two ways. We can do the thorns way. We're going to call that the thorn way now, right? Thorn way. Thorn way. There we go. Okay. Or, or we can do the, we can do the, that other way, right? The normal way. So let's do the normal way first. The square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 20. Plus, square root of 2 times the square root of 14 is the square root of 28. Ah, square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times 5, right? Which is 2 square root of 5. Plus, plus, the square root of 28 is um, 4 times 7, so that's going to be 2 times the square root of 7. So that's my answer. Gary, see it. I'm sorry. See what I did? I said, I'll do it over here now. So, square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 20. Square root of 2 times the square root of 14 is the square root of 28. Ah, uh, so now I think, oh, the largest perfect square that goes to 20 is 4. So that's the square root of 4 times 5, which is 2 times the square root of 5. Plus, this is 4 times 7, 2 times the square root of 7. Now, can I go further? Probably no. Yeah. no. Probably not. <laughs> right? Probably not, because they're not like terms. It's like a 2x plus a, uh, plus a 2y, right? Square root of 5 and square root of 7 are totally different balls of wax, right? I can't say I've got two square root of 5s here, and somebody gives me two more square root of 7s. That doesn't mean I have four square root of 7s, right? I just, I just have two square root of 5s and two square root of 7s, right? All right. What if I gave you... Where are we? Okay. Um... Let me think. What if I gave you something like this? Um, square root of three times the square root of six plus two times the square root of twenty-four. Okay. All right. So, square root of nine. Uh, <laughs> square root of nine? <laughs> so, so, we can do it two ways. We could do, we could do it. Square root of eight. So nine, two. One thing I could do, I'll do a thorn way. I'll do the thorn way way, okay? The thorn way, okay. So we have, we have the, I'm going to just rewrite it for a second. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times 2, right? You see what I'm doing? 3 and 3, look at that. I'm trying to get 3's in each of these, plus 2 times the square root of 3 times 8, right? All right, so watch this. When I do this, the 3's come out as a 3. So I now have 3 square root of 2. You see what I'm doing? Yes. Make sense? All right. And then here, look, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. So that'll come as a 3. Those cross out. So 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to put 6, 3 times 2 is 6, times the square root of 8. Wait, why did you put the 3 above it? Just to remind myself, because the three, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, 3 times this number. Whenever there's a number in front of this, my tendency is to just put what comes out up here and then multiply it. It just reminds me to multiply. Does that make sense? You see what I'm doing? Right? And, um, and you can always do that. You can always put it up above. A lot of people do that. Some people. Not a lot of people, but some people. Now, am I done? Yes. 
No. Why? Because what? you can simplify eight. Yeah, you always have to look at these and ask, well, two is this, as simple as it gets, right? Yes. You can't have the, you can't you go. You can simplify eight. But you can simplify eight, because what perfect squares goes into eight? Four. 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 So I got to keep going. So I got three, three square root of two plus, plus six times six the square root of times four times, times four. two. So square root of four is two, I'm gonna put it up here. Two times six is 12, right? So I have three square root of two plus 12 square root of twos. Can I go any further? Yeah, well, wait, yeah, it was six. You can add 12. You can add them, because it's the You can add them. Yeah, you can add them. Wait, what? Are they like terms? Yes. Right, so Thorn. I found your 15. This is the 15 you meant to say, uh -huh. right? 3 plus 12 is? 15. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's the 15 square root of twos, right? You have 15 of them. Square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus 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 square root of 2, right? So are you make, is this making sense, you guys? Now, sometimes you might see something like this. Let's try this. Sometimes... Um, you might have something weird. Like, what if I gave you, let me think. I don't want to do something on here. Uh, let me think for a second. Um, um, no, I can't do that. Um, oh, wait, how about that? Wait a minute, no, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, that might work. Two times, what's, uh, remove. Okay, square root of two times the square root of two, well, let's see, let's see, four times the square root of two plus, oh shoot, now I forgot what I was gonna do. Ah, square root of, what was I gonna do? It was gonna be two times, um, oh, I know what it was, uh, 22.5. Oh, this looks hard. Really hard. 11. Uh, really hard. Whoops, I forgot mine. Okay, so we're going to use a distributive property, right? So what is this going to be? Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is? 2. 2 times 4 is? 8. So now we've got that one all done. Plus, what's the square root of 2 times the square root of 22.5? 11. No. What is? What? Say what? What did you say? What is the square root of 2 times the square root of 22.5? It's 45. Square root of 45 if you multiply it out, right? 22.5 times 2 is 45. Ah, what can I do now? 9. 9. Okay, 8 plus the square root of 9 times 5, which means 8 plus 3 times the square root of 5. And that's my answer, right? Now, I know this says, I think that's all I have to cover on multiplying, but you know what I'm going to do? Oh, wait. Should I do one more? Let me do one more, and then I'm going to do one other thing. Um, I'm going to, okay. What if I gave you something like this, though? What if I gave you 5 square root of 4x, 2 square root of... Um, 9x. Well, that, that doesn't make sense. There's no multiplication signs. There. I think it automatically multiplies if there's nothing there. Exactly. In algebra, that's the case. Whenever, I mean, I mean, well, like, it almost is the case. Like, this does not mean 2 times 2. That does not mean 4. That means 22. But... But when you have different kinds of numbers, like you've got a two, 5 here, and then you have the square root of 4x, well, that's a, its own number, right? And then you have the 2 next to it, you automatically assume you're multiplying, right? So it's 5 times the square root of 4x times 2 times the square root of 9x. So let's do this one. So what does that give us? So 9x plus uh, 6x. All right. So we got um, yeah. square root of 4 is what? So I'm going to put the 2 up there for now. So I've got 2 times 5 is 10 square root of whatever's left over, x. Right? You with me? Now, oh, I've got times this 2, okay, times the square root of, ah, wait.
Wait a minute, but we can, we have 9x. What could we do with the 9? Uh, Square root of 9 is 3, three so. so that could come out as 3 times 2, which is 6. Okay, so we have now 10 times the square root of x times 6 times the square root of x. Oh, wow. Well, we could do commutative property says I could do 10 times 6. What's 10 times 6? 60. 60. All right, 60 times the square root of x times the square root of x. x. Uh-oh. What's the square root of x times the square root of x? x? X. X. So my whole answer is 60x. That's awesome. That huge mess up there became so simple. Did I do it right? Did it look like I did it right? 5 times 6, 10, 2. Yeah, that's right. We did it. Now... I am going to just introduce, do I'm going to introduce, no I'm not, we got, that's going to be fine. Yeah, um, are you leaving right away or do I have you for break too? Break. Oh I do? Can we meet? Can I show you the next step? Okay. So that's it. Okay. So that's the end of the lecture.